Welcome back to AZH Wound Center in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I'm your humble correspondent, Dr. Jeffrey Nisgoda, and I'd like to share with you another very interesting case. Uh, in our prior episodes of Wound Care Window, we've shared with you some decision making regarding when and when not to debride an eschar. We've got another interesting dilemma here, and again, it illustrates a lot of the teaching points that we've shared with you before. So I'd like to share this, uh, this case with you today. Uh, this young lady uh, had the unfortunate uh, sequence of events where she was uh, at one of uh, the local establishments um, and uh, she was going up an escalator and tripped and fell and uh, sustained trauma, blunt injury to the anterior aspect of her lower leg. If you palpate right here, you can actually feel the transverse fracture of her patella. So that's been documented radiologically. She has uh, a big area of uh, soft tissue swelling that developed into an eschar. Obviously, she's lost uh, the dermis uh, through dermal necrosis, and we know that can oftentimes happen when we have trauma uh, and have a, uh, a subcutaneous uh, or subdermal hematoma, which obviously has happened here. Um, I think a smart decision was made when she was hospitalized and in her post-operative uh, period to maintain this in a closed uh, fashion, i.e. this was not debrided. We know that the skin serves as a very good protective uh, dressing, if you will, for uh, blood underneath the tissue. However, there is decision making that must occur, especially when we start to have violation of this intact uh, eschar. And if you look very closely right here, you see that in fact has happened over the last couple of days. If I milk this area here, you can see that we're able to get some hematoma that's been liquefying uh, out of that area. You see it's the jellyish material is starting to come out. So we know that this uh, area now communicates directly with the outside environment. And when that happens, uh, the potential for bacterial contamination of the hematoma occurs. So the decision is, what do we do? Do we maintain it in this fashion or do we actually remove the eschar to open and allow for enhanced drainage and better wound care efforts? Well, the decision here is pretty straightforward. The risk of her uh, having an infection by not debriding this and leaving it uh, in a closed, non-well compressed uh, fashion is, is significant. And so what we're gonna do today is uh, debride this. I already talked to her about the risks and benefits of doing this. Uh, this is a fairly painless procedure because I'm not going to be going out into the healthy tissue. I'm going to be going right along the margins. And as we know, anything that is uh, necrotic is dead. Uh, no pain, right? No? No. Okay, very good. You let me know if that changes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift the eschar and I'm going to just slowly debris right along the margin of the healthy versus non-healthy tissue. We're just going to march right along. If I get into some tissue that's bleeding, I've obviously gone too far. So that's a good way of judging uh, the margins. But I'm gonna try to get as much of the necrotic uh, dermis as I can. We know necrotic tissue is a nidus for infection, as is an old hematoma. So all of this is gonna be evacuated. And we're gonna just keep marching right along the margins. No pain? No. If I do get into an area that's painful, I know I've gone too far. We lift that eschar, and you can see the hematoma underneath. This is liquefying. The underlying tissue actually looks pretty good. Hopefully the rest of it looks the same. I'm going to go ahead and start on this other margin. One of the things we need to be careful of is that you don't know the depth of this necrotic tissue, so I'm working it both ways. I don't want to go too deep. At least during this first debridement, we might need to take more later down the road, but for right now we're just going to take the necrotic eschar. There's some necrotic fat and other subcutaneous tissue that's associated with this. I'll show you that in a bit. And once again, if you're skilled in your debridement and you're right on the margin, you really don't need to use any anesthesia with this. There's a good shot here. If you look, 
Here we have necrotic escarred subcutaneous tissue. There's some more necrotic subcutaneous tissue there, as well as some hematoma. You can see that tissue is not very healthy. And we can come back and clean that up a little later or at the next visit. I find it a personal challenge to try to do these debridements. Like I'm debriding an orange, I like to get the entire eschar all at once. That certainly is not critical, but it's a challenge of mine personally to see if I can do it. So far, so good. I mean, it'd be probably easier to come across here, but again, I'm weird. And we've almost completed our debridement. And there we go. Look at that. Success. I did it. Got the whole thing off in one piece. So again, we lay that out and you can see the fair, fairly, amount, fairly good amount of uh, necrotic tissue. We'll then explore the rest of the wound base. I think some of this uh, hematoma uh, we got a little bleeder there. We got some of this hematoma was obviously uh, evacuating for some time because you can see that a lot of it has um, been uh, mobilized uh, over time. The base is actually fairly clean on this wound. And what I was really worried about is, as I suggested to you, worried about there being an exposed bone or patella underneath. I don't see that, so that's good. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to pay a little bit more attention to the underlying tissues. Then we'll go ahead and dress this. A uh, great dressing for this would be managing it with negative pressure wound therapy. When you manage it with negative pressure wound therapy, again, when the goal is to granulate this tissue, granulation will accelerate the healing. I also like uh, negative pressure wound therapy because it provides uh, a seal protective type of dressing preventing contamination from the outside world. So that will give us that benefit as well. So we will probably go ahead and start her on negative pressure wound therapy and maybe we'll share some follow-up of this patient with you on another edition of the Wound Care Window. So thanks for joining us once again. <laughs>